Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Vanchakalpa Tarubhyas Chakripa Sindhu Bhaiva Chapati Tanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutale Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Goravani Pricharine Nirvasesha Sonyavadi Paschacha Desatarine Vanchakau Patarubhyas Chakri Pasindu Beva Chapati Tanam Pavani Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namon Mahajai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Shri Advaita Gadara Shri Vasadigor Bhaktavanda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare <coughs> So yesterday Yesterday was the auspicious day, Makar Sankranti. Makar San Sankranti is when the sun changes its direction. So Makar Sankranti is when the sun changes from moving to the south, begins to move to the north. It's a very auspicious day. We had a big crowd here at Mayapur Temple, much bigger than we've had for a very long time. Many buses were here and outside also on the main road there on the Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati road there there were many people a lot of activity so Makar Sankranti is also the day when there's a big mela at Ganga Sagar because Kapila Muni's ashram is there Ganga Sagar and it's a very big occasion big mela Thousands of people go there. Our devotees are there. And uh, actually, we're building a temple there now at uh, Ganga Sagar. A donor came forward in Calcutta, contributed the entire cost. And it's going to, I think, about six, six, six crores they were planning to spend there to build the temple. So it will be a nice temple. And uh, the devotees stay there. They'll have pro they're having programs, prasadam distribution, preaching, and uh, also book distribution, of course. So the sig this uh, significance of the festival is, of course, glorification of Mother Ganga, Mother Ganges. It said in Chaitanya Charitamrita that the Lord is present in wood and in water. In the form of Lord Jagannath, he's present in the form of in wood, and in the form of water, the Lord is present as Mother Ganga. And in Bhagavad Gita also Lord Krishna mentions in Vibhuti Yoga chapter ten that of flowing rivers I am the Gang Ganges. So Ganges is very, very important river. Of course, some, some people say, well, Yamuna is even more important. And certainly, when Mother Ganga was coming to this world, she didn't want to come alone, so she brought Mother Ganges, Mother Yamuna with her. And Yamuna is also very powerful, but because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appearing in the Kali Yuga and he appeared there in, here in Mayapur on the banks of the Ganga and every day performed pastimes for the you know, first 24 years of his manifest pastimes were spent here in Mayapur. So Mother Ganga becomes equally important as the Yamuna, equally as purifying as the Yamuna by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, Mother Ganga flows in the heavenly planets as the Mundakini. And there's different opinions about the origin of Mother Ganga. Some people say it's the water from Lord Brahma's Kamandalu. 
and other people say it's the water which comes from Lord Vamanadev when he took three steps of land that he pierced the covering of the universe with his big toe and the water from the Kajal Ocean came in and that water which washes the lotus feet of Lord Vamanadev flows in the heavenly planets as the Mundakini and comes down to this earth planet in the form of Mother Ganga. So bringing Mother Ganges down to this earth planet, the credit goes of course to Maharaj Bhagirat. Maharaj Bhagirat is a descendant from Maharaj Sagar and Srimad Bhagavan, Bhagavatam narrates how Maharaj Sagar was performing a horse sacrifice, Ashwamedha Yagya, and at some point the horse went missing. So Maharaj Sagar had 16,000 sons, and the 16,000 sons set out to find the horse. And they eventually found the horse, and they saw that the horse was beside Kapila Muni. Kapila Muni was sitting, engaged in meditation, and near to him, somehow this horse, which was meant to be sacrificed, was there. So the 16,000 sons of Maharaj Sagar were wrong in understanding the situation, that they thought that Lord Kapila had taken the horse, and they had become, they developed this anger towards him, and they were going to attack him. And so the result of their offensive mentality was that they burned themselves to ashes. Just from the fire of offense, they burned their own selves into ashes. It was not that it was the anger of Lord Kapila, but it was their own offense which burned them into ashes. So when they were burned into ashes, the the question was how to deliver them from their offence, because by their offence they're going into hellish planets, to the lower planets, how can they be delivered? And the attempt was then made to bring Mother Ganges down, because they knew the water of Mother Ganges is spiritually purifying. So the different descendants of Maharaj Sagar all tried to do austerities to bring Mother Ganga and it was not until Bhagirat Maharaj came that he was successful. But he had to pass, he had to settle some issues with Mother Ganga first of all. There were two main issues. Mother Ganga was concerned about the inundation of her waters on the planet Earth, that the inundation of her waters would be so great that it would knock the planet out of orbit. So Maharaj Bhagirat resolved this issue by saying that we will request Lord Shiva to take the water of Ganges on his head. Lord Shiva, of course, he's a great Vaishnava and he was willing to do this because he knew that this water of the Ganges, this is Abhishek water. It's washed the lotus feet of Lord Vamanadev. Therefore, it's proper to take it on the head. Just like when we go to bathe in Mother Ganga, before going into her waters, we will first of all take some water and place it on the head and then offer her respectful obeisances to Mother Ganges. So uh, Lord Shiva was willing to take the force of Mother Ganga on his head, on his head and then release the water to flow down through the Himalayas out to Ganga Sagar. Then the other issue which Mother Ganges had was that she didn't like to come to the earth planet because she was, she knew that if she comes to this earth planet there are many sinful people and many sinful people will take advantage of her purif purifying potency and they will come and bathe in her water to leave their sinful reactions in her waters. And this is a serious problem, to take the reactions, the sinful reactions of others is a very big responsibility. Srila Prabhupada writes in this connection in the Srimad Bhagavatam how 
serious it is for the disciples to very carefully follow the regulative principles of spiritual life and not to engage in any sinful activities. Because if they engage in sinful activities, then their spiritual teacher also becomes responsible and he also has to suffer on their behalf. So Mother Ganga, she didn't want to just come and let sinful people bathe in her water and take all their sinful reactions. But Maharaj Bhagirat told her that, don't worry, if you come to this earth planet, that yes, sinful people will come and bathe in your water, but there are many saintly persons who will also come and bathe in your water. Great sages, great yogis, they will all come and they will bathe in your water. And the effect of them bathing in your water will nullify any of the sinful reactions left by all these sinful people. So hearing this, Mother Ganga was sat satisfied and she agreed. She came down to this earth planet. And when she came down, she first onto the head of Lord Shiva and then flowing through the Himalayas, coming down. And course of time they came here to Mayapur. Now in Mayapur in Navadweep, there's Janamuni's ashram. And Janamuni was sitting there in his ashram, he was about to do his puja, when all of a sudden the flood of water came right through his ashram and took away everything. Took away all of his puja paraphernalia and his akshman and everything. So he was shocked. It was a, quite a surprise you could imagine. So Janamuni, no ordinary person, he decided to drink the Ganga and he drank up the whole Ganges and the Ganges disappeared. And Maharaj Sagar is coming behind and then he wondered what happened? Where did the Ganga go? And then he saw Janamuni and Janamuni said, I, I drank it, I drank the water of the Ganges. She took away, she destroyed my ashram, she took away everything, all my paraphernalia. I drank, I drank her. So Maharaj Bhagirat fell at the feet of Janumuni and begged him that please, there's a lot of pur purpose, we need Mother Ganges to purify this earth planet, there are many sinful people waiting to be delivered and it needs her water. So please kindly release Mother Ganga and let her continue to flow. So at the request of Bhagirat Maharaj, Janumuni brought Mother Ganga out from his knee. And this is how Mother Ganga got another name, Janavi. Right? Janavi, Janavi. The water coming from Janumuni's knee. So Mother Ganga has many names, right? Bhagirati as well is one of her names because by the, pot by the austerities of Maharaj Bhagirat, she had come down to the earth planet. And then she flows out into the ocean at Ganga Sagar. We were hearing yesterday uh, from Janani Vas that uh, Mother Ganga branches into like 100 little streams. It's like a delta when Mother Ganga flows into the ocean. She breaks into many little streams, about 100 or more streams. So. There's a nice pastime narrated in uh, the Navadvik Mahatmya. There's, it describes how there's a conversation takes place between the ocean personified, that is Samudra, the ocean is Samudra, and Mother Ganga, the personification of Mother Ganga and Samudra. So the ocean is comes to glorify Mother Ganga. Actually, there's a place in Navadvip Dam, when we go on Parikrama, in Koladvip, there's a place called Samudragar. Samudragar, actually, gar has come from the word gati. Gati meaning flows, that the ocean comes up, the ocean flows up to this point. The Samudra ocean comes right the way up 
Ganga. You, we say Ganga flows into the ocean, but sometimes the ocean also flows up into the Ganga. And the ocean flowed right up to Navadweep. Why? Because the ocean wants to have darshan of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Samudra knew that the Supreme Lord is appearing in his most merciful form. And the ocean desired to see the Lord in this form. So there's a conversation takes place between Samudra and Mother Ganga. And Samudra is glorifying Mother Ganga. That you're so fortunate that the Supreme Lord appears here and in your place. And he bathes every day in your water. You're so fortunate. It's such a blessing for you to have the Supreme Lord personally come and bathe and perform his path, pastimes in your water. But Mother Ganga told Samudra, the ocean, that, no, no, you don't know, I'm not so fortunate. That, yeah, for some time he will be here, but at a certain point he's going to take sannyas, he's going to leave here, and he's going to go to your water. He will move to Puri. Instead of being here in Mayapur, he will move over to Puri. And in Puri, he'll be bathing in your water, in the sea, in the ocean there every day. So when Samudra heard this from Mother Ganga, the ocean, Samudra replied, Yes, that I, I, know, I know this is true. I know the Lord is going to leave here. He's, not, he's going to come to my place. But, you know, he's going to come to Puri. He'll be a sannyasi. He won't have his beautiful long locks of hair. He'll be dressed in that terrible saffron cloth. He'll be in the, as a renunciate. It will be painful to see him in that way. I won't, I won't, it's not going to be the same, not like you. And anyway, Mother, uh, the Samudra, the ocean personified said to Mother Ganga, you should understand that actually Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is always residing there in Mayapur. And he's always performing pastimes in the water of the Ganges there. Because Mayapur is a dam, it's a holy dam. The dam is the place where the Lord resides eternally. So eternally the Lord is there in Mayapur and he's bathing every day in the Ganga. So you don't have to worry that he's going to leave you. He's there. And the ocean, the uh, Bhakti, Bhakti, uh, Hari Bhakti Vilas describes how the ocean actually comes up the Ganges all the way up to the Samudra Gurd, and he actually sees Chaitanya Mahaprabhu performing his pastimes there with his associates. And he had darshan of Lord Chaitanya sitting under a big tree, surrounded by his associates like Lord Nityananda and Advaita and Gadarhar and Srivas. They're all there with Lord Chaitanya. And so the ocean was in ecstasy, relishing seeing the Supreme Lord with all of his associates. So another important uh, pastime in relation to Mother Ganga is that uh, Mother Ganga comes, described in Mahabharata, how Mother Ganga personified, and she comes in the form of a beautiful woman and she becomes the wife of Maharaj Santanu. And as the wife of Maharaj Santanu, they had many children. But she had, Mother Ganga had told Maharaj Santanu that don't interfere with me. Whatever I do, don't try to stop me. You, I will stay with you, but don't interfere with whatever I do. And so they were staying together and she was giving birth to children one after another. And each time she gave birth to a child, she'd take the child and go and throw it in the Ganga. And this happened one after another. There were seven children born, and each one she took and she threw them in the Ganga. So Maharaj Santanu 
he is a you know he's a Kshatriya king and kings they like to have many children, especially sons. And here's his wife, this Ganga, she's taking the children, throwing them in the Ganga. So Maharaj Santana was broken hearted, what to do? He could not tolerate it. Finally it came to the eighth child. And when the eighth child was, was born, then he stopped her. He said, no, no, you cannot take this child away. I'm not going to let you throw it in the Ganga anymore. And as soon as Maharaj Santana did this, then immediately she said, now I have to go. So Maharaj Santana was left with that one child. And that one child, of course, grew up to be Bhishma. Hmm. Of course, that was not his name initially. Later on, he got that name Bhishma when he took the vow to let his father get married again. So Bhishma was born from the Ganga, and he was one of he's one of the Vasus. Actually, Mother Ganga was performing this pastime. The purpose was to release the different Vasus, eight Vasus who had been cursed. So they had to take a human birth. So Mother Ganga allowed them to take birth from her womb and she would throw them in the Ganga. And by throwing them in the Ganga, then they would go back to the heavenly planets and they would get their demigod body back again. But with the eighth child, Bhishma, she, that, she, she wasn't able to do that. So Bhishma remained here in this world. So in this way, Mother Ganga is performing many wonderful pastimes. M Mother Ganga is the source of livelihood for so many farmers. By her waters, pe so many farmers are able to irrigate the land and to produce many crops. Then in the basin of the Ganga, around the Ganges, there's so much food can be produced. You can feed practically the whole world. There's no need for scarcity of food when the Ganges is there. So this the mercy of Mother Ganga. Mother Ganga has many wonderful devotees. Some of them from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Lila. For example, Pundarik Vijanidi was a very great devotee of Mother Ganga. And he would he he was very sorry to see people go to the Ganges and just simply bathe in the Ganga with soap, something which you should never do. You, should, you may take a bucket of water out from the Ganga and then bathe at the side, but don't bathe directly in the river with soap. So he would lament to see people abusing Mother Ganga. And he, he himself, he would just take some water on his head and offer obeisances to Mother Ganga. And there are other... Sampradayas, I think the Sri Vaishnavas also, they have that culture that they won't go and bathe in the Ganga. They'll simply take drops of water, place it on their head and bow to Mother Ganges. Uh, another great devotee of Mother Ganga was Kolaveka Sridhar. Kolaveka Sridhar used to spend half of his income every day of course, he was not a very rich man, but whatever income he got, he had that vow that he would always spend half of his income to worship Mother Ganga. And he was very satisfied and very happy to do this. Our mood in worshipping Mother Ganga, you know, many people may worship Mother Ganga, but they often worship for material desires. They want a nice house, they want and more children, they want more money, they, you know, they want long life, they don't want material anxiety, they're praying to Mother Ganga for all these things. But the actual mood in worshipping Mother Ganga should be simply to get devotion for Lord Krishna. There's a nice prayer in Srimad Bhagavatam offered by Queen Kunti, that's the first canto, chapter 8. Tvai me nanya vishaya madir madu pate sakrit gangi ratim mudvahatad ada gangi voga mudanvadi. Queen Kunti is saying that as the Ganges flows forever to the sea without obstruction, let my attraction to Lord Krishna. 
be drawn in the same spontaneous way. So we can also worship Mother Ganga in that way. Please, let my attraction to you be unimpeded. Let it be continuous. It's a very nice example. Uh, there were two brothers, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya and his brother, Lord Chaitanya told Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, you worship Lord Jagannath, and he told the brother, he said, you worship Mother Ganga. So Lord Chaitanya certainly approved the devotees to worship Mother Ganga. Now, of course, here in Mayapur, we have a nice temple there on the banks of Ganga, little temple with the deity of Mother Ganga. So worship is going on. So these are just some things, uh, briefly, just to explain about the, the festival yesterday, Makar Sankranti, as I said, the sun moving now to the north and coming more and the weather gradually becomes warmer. We're remembering also the glories of Lord Kapila with the big mela at Ganga Sagar. Lord Kapila, after he had taught his mother Devahuti, Srimad Bhagavatam describes how Lord Kapila followed the Ganges, went, followed the length of the Ganga, went around and came back and then made his ashram at the mouth of the Ganga, where the Ganga flows into the sea. So Lord Kapila has a strong connection there with Mother Ganga. So we pray we can also remember Mother Ganges and take shelter of her holy water. When uh, Lord Chaitanya's father, Jagannath Mishra, was leaving this world, in Chaitanya Bhagwad it's described that he was brought to the Ganges and he was placed in the water of the Ganges. They would give up their body, people would give up their body in the Ganges. And we know also Naratam Das Thakur, he had a very glorious departure. He was bathing in River Padma. River Padma is also part of the Ganges. He was bathing in River Padma, it's also the Ganga. And, and when he was bathing along with some disciples, his body just turned into milk while he was bathing in the Ganges. And they, they have a, his dud. Dud meaning milk, they have his dud samadhi. So a, that was a very special departure of Naratam Das Thakur, how he could give up his body, transforming it into milk in the water of the Ganges. As Srila, we heard yesterday also, I heard from Janani Vas Prabhu, Srila Prabhupada was telling devotees that if we make a, a nice path from his uh, residence in Mayapur to the Ganga, he said, every day I will go and bathe in the water of the Ganges. So many people do like that, they make a nice vow. There's many devotees here, they're bathing every day. It's a very good way to keep health, materially and spiritually. Okay, so thank you very much. Ganga Mai Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Gaur Premanande.